All right. Um, so my name is Sarah Ivory. I'm an assistant professor at uh, Penn State, and I'm going to be talking about some work that we've been doing with the African pollen database data, looking at abrupt change in African uh, tropical forests for the last 20,000 years. So the reason for the focus on forests is that there are a lot of really important ecologically and economically important reasons that we're interested in forests. They have a lot of species that are unique. They're a source of resources. Uh, for people living directly off the land, um, but they also occur in some of the warmest places on earth today. So predicting and managing forests against collapse under future warmer conditions can be really complicated. Um, and in particular, I'm gonna be talking about some of the most worrisome types of changes, those that are happening um, quickly uh, because they're really difficult to predict and often impossible to reverse. So I'm gonna be referring a lot today to abrupt ecological change and so for the purposes of this talk, we're talking about a change that happens fast, in particular, faster than, than background rates of change. So there are a lot of examples of abrupt ecological change in the quaternary record, mostly from individual sites with pollen records. Uh, but one issue in um, understanding the connection between climate as a driver of abrupt change um, and an individual site is that it's difficult because local controls can also influence the pace of ecosystem change. Uh, it's difficult to disentangle those two. So one way that we can address this and get at identifying climatically driven abrupt change is by moving from the site level to global or regional syntheses in order to look for synchronous patterns of abrupt change that are more likely to be related to broad scale climate. There have been a few recent studies that have applied different techniques in doing this. And what you see on the right side of the slide um, is a map from a paper by uh, Modal et al. Um, from 2021. And basically the reason I have this up here is that um, you can see that uh, this is their sample sites um, from that paper that they used in this analysis. Uh, you can see the very few points from Africa. So what's up with Africa? Um, and it's not that there are so few um, pollen data sets in Africa, but you know these type of syntheses require data to be accessible and standardized. Um, and that hasn't been the case in Africa. And so it's made it very difficult to evaluate these larger scale patterns of ecological change in Africa. Um, that lack of data hasn't always been the case. And if you heard my talk on Monday, I talked a lot about relaunching the African pollen database. Go and check that out if you're interested. Since 2019, um, we have uploaded 277 data sets to Neotoma and we have lots of ongoing activities. Uh, so I'm going to talk mostly about research that we're doing based on that work in order to evaluate uh, abrupt ecosystem change. So I'm recording this on Tuesday, but I imagine that Ondra Modal um, will talk about rate poll and uh, fossil poll on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so but my uh, master's student, David Early, has been collaborating with him and Suzette Flantua in order to use the African pollen database to calculate vegetation rates of change across Africa since the late glacial. Um, some quick takeaways from his work um, is that he observes increased rates of change during the late glacial coincident with periods of very fast climate change, um, as well as during the Holocene when climate change was more muted in Africa. Um, and so this is sort of a project that he's working on. These tools are, are really powerful, um, but I also wanted to um, talk about a project that I've been working on that's related but separate uh, it takes us in a slightly different direction and focuses on, on change within specific important ecosystems. And so forests are going to be the focus. Um, and not just looking at um, how fast taxa move in and move out, but the, the particular direction that that takes within an ecosystem. So the method that I'm going to be using here is actually a part of um, an abrupt change toolkit in R, or the actor package. Um, that was developed by Nick McKay and Julian Amilger. So very briefly, this method allows you to detect significant changes in the mean or variance of data set over a specific time window. Um, it also allows you to integrate both age and proxy uncertainties and include significance testing that basically tells you whether or not an apparent shift in a data set that's detected stands out given all of these uncertainties against a robust null hypothesis. So is my data set really changing? So using these new tools, I'm going to answer two questions. Um, when is forest changing and how is it? What is the pace of that change? This is a really pared down method slide, but essentially what I did is I reconstructed forest from the LGM to present using pollen data sets. 
uh, from neotoma using a process called biomization. And then I combine the individual time series using an age uncertain PCA and geochron R in order to create a single time series that represented forest change regionally. Um, and then for the second part, in order to uh, evaluate how forest was changing, I identified uh, significant abrupt events using ACTOR on the individual time series and then binned the identified significant abrupt events to determine if there were times when abrupt events were happening synchronously everywhere. So then I also classified each abrupt event into an, in an ecological meaningful way based on whether it represented a time when, when forest was increasing abruptly over a transition, whether it was decreasing abruptly, or whether it represented actually a transition from a forest to a more open biome like a savanna. Uh, and because the transitions from one biome type to another are really important, I also identified um, uh, episodes where there was a transition that was not an abrupt event, and I called it a slow transition, so it was a slow opening of forest. So first off, um, when is forest changing? The first principal component that came out of the principal components analysis um, on all the biomized time series represents the most dominant pattern of forest change um, over time that you can see here plotted next to the NGRIP oxygen isotope record to provide a global benchmark. There's a pretty simple pattern. You see an increase in forest after about 15,000 years ago when global climate is changing pretty dramatically, a period of maximum forest extent during the Holocene, um, and then followed by a decrease in forest until just today. That's about the same magnitude as the increase during the last deglacial. So another really interesting piece that comes out of this is that the spatial pattern that's produced by the loadings of the first principal component shows this interesting dipole spatial pattern that you see on the left side of the slide that's really similar to hydroclimatic patterns in Africa over the same period of time. We have positive loadings in red throughout most of Africa, and then a cluster of negative loadings in blue in, in a handful of Southeast African sites. So what this suggests is that there are regionally distinct patterns of forest change that are probably tied to hydroclimate. And so I want to use these two different regions identified by the principal component um, in order to look at if there are regionally distinct patterns of abrupt change of forest as well. So um, how did forest change over this period? What was the pace of that change? In order to evaluate that, I broke out all of my sites of pollen data into these two regions identified by the PCA into these two different panels. And what's shown in each panel is the same. It's the frequency of abrupt events as a proportion of the total number of records. So high values mean a lot of things happening everywhere all at once. Um, and then I also classified each event into an ecological category that tell us if forest is increasing, decreasing, or if it's going away entirely. So there's lots of interesting take-homes for this data that I can't get into, but a high level, what I want you to see is that the deglacial is a period of time when forest is increasing abruptly everywhere in response to these big climate changes. But then in contrast, the Holocene is sort of ubiquitously a time of forest decline, starting in East Africa when there's an early and abrupt uh, end of the first Holocene humid period, which isn't seen elsewhere in Africa. But there's also some really interesting things that are happening in both regions over the last 5,000 years. Uh, there's a high proportion of sites that show transitions from forest to more open environments that are happening both abruptly as well as that are happening slowly. And so it's notable that while there's certainly some climate change happening this time in Africa, that these changes are much smaller in magnitude than what's happening during the last deglacial. Um, so potentially some site level characteristics may be playing a role in forest decline in the last 5,000 years. Um, so there's still a lot of work being done to try to potentially attribute some of this increase in forest sensitivity in the late Holocene to human impacts. Um, but there is archaeological literature from the region that shows a major increase in farming and, and Iron Age uh, 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 archaeological sites at this time, um, suggesting that you know, fire as a disturbance mechanism because of an increase in people in this area at the time um, might be driving some of the nonlinear site-specific transitions that we see in forest to more open environments across, across this interval. Um, and so just where do we go from here? We're trying to dig deeper in this project into mechanisms, both climatic as well as, as human, um, human impacts mechanisms. 
Uh, we also, in terms of like the community, the APD community in general, are working um, from a research perspective on furthering data mobilization in order to provide some useful products to the paleoecology community as well, including some field reconstructions of large scale biome through time, which you can see um, the version for forest in the animation on the right side there. Um, we're also in general really interested in uh, facilitating research um, through a variety of different efforts that I talked about in my presentation on Monday, including a workshop series and a research hub called Mapping Ancient Africa. Um, and we also have a citation for the African Pollen Database that's Lucene et al. 2021. We'd also like to know about other cool research that other people are doing. So please let us know about it. Let me know about it directly, what you've been up to. I'd love to know what people are doing with APD data. Um, this work uh, relied on a lot of people in order to, um, to happen in terms of the data mobilization, as well as, as the research itself. I can't name them all individually, but they're mentioned on the slide. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Thanks for your uh, attention and, um, and that's it.